Hello everyone, welcome back to A Light in the Dark. Let's go ahead and continue. It was the same dream. There was no sky nor ground, only endless darkness. I couldn't control my thoughts despite being fully conscious. I felt like watching some old documentary. I heard intermittent sounds that seemed to be made by cats or sobbing children. I tried to find the source of the sound, but there was only darkness around me. I couldn't take hold of anything while listening to it. I have no choice but to search blindly, oblivious to the passage of time. Eventually, I saw something. It was an empty living room. The desk was scattered with all kinds of things. Wine glasses, a medicine bag, books, and papers. Mother was lying on the sofa in her pajamas and with messy hair. She was crying with her face covered. Did this really happen? Or was it all a fabrication? The living room was always spotless and clean in my memory. And my mother was always radiant with makeup on. So why? Why couldn't I remember all this? Confusion and fear turned into ways that engulfed me back to the darkness. I could vaguely smell the familiar cigarette scent and open my eyes amidst the seemingly never-ending rain. came to my vision was the girl right before my face. She squatted before me and just kept staring at me without blinking. Do you two just enjoy scaring people like this? I helplessly protested. Even without malice, it was still not pleasant having someone staring at you when you woke up. Nanda? Seeing my panicked expression, she smirked. What do you want? She grabbed my hand without my permission. The pain when she touched my wounds made me try to shake off her grip, but that didn't faze her. She rolled up my sleeve, revealing the nasty purple-black color across my arm. I saw the swollen wounds marked with blood, like some scary totem. She just grabbed my hand without saying anything. I didn't know what she wanted, but didn't resist either since I didn't sense any ill intention. Yet, she didn't do anything. She looked at me quietly. What? You finding me too attractive? I couldn't bear the knees and spoke. I tried to joke around but only got the look from her. She lowered her glance and touched my wounds lightly. Her trembling eyelashes seemed to hide some unspeakable emotion. It's alright. I was intrigued when I got hurt, and probably would take quite some time to recover. I was lucky it didn't damage the bone. She grunted and let go of my hand. It was unbelievable. But she seemed to regret the fact of hurting me the day before. 
She kidnapped me, yet didn't really want to hurt me. She hated to be discriminated against, yet was full of bias against the rich. Perhaps even she was aware of all these contradictions. So what now? She returned the question with a half-deprecating, a self-deprecating expression that was hard to look at. She sat back by the window and took out a phone. Then I heard the sounds of text messaging. The sound of rain and typing intertwined, becoming a peaceful melody that echoed within the room. Let's chat, I guess. So I heard you were a straight A student. The girl paused upon hearing me, then awkwardly turned to look at me. Realizing who could have leaked that secret, she sighed with resignation. No, just found it interesting. Maybe things would have been different if she stayed in school. Had they sought out government aid, like from the Department of Social Welfare to District Office. Had their father missing and mother having passed away, they could have applied for low income relief, and maybe the government could make some arrangements to help them settle down somewhere. It would be quite incompetent if they can't even take care of such a case. Not qualified? Do only those who are everyone else in their family's dead count or something? <sighs> she impatiently sighed.役所にいる奴らも法律を決める奴らもいつも人や秩序を守り予定通りに動くと思い込んでるお金がないなら低所得の申請を出す借金が返せない人は倒産を申し込むまるでどんな人間でも彼らが作った法律によって守られているような口
友達にもろくなもんがいない多分どっかで隠れていてアルバイトでもして日々を送っているでしょうよとっくに死んでいるかもしれないあっ I didn't expect her to describe it so vividly, as though she saw it herself. I was in the house when I was born. I was nine years old. I was a little bit of a impression. I was able to make money from the money, but I was able to make money from the money. I was able to make money from the money from the money. I was able to make money from the money. そういう話ばかり最後は自分の家にさえ帰れなくなるなんて笑わせるな Perhaps it was the recollection that led to dissatisfaction In contrast the little girl didn't seem to care as much Perhaps even she didn't notice herself the sympathy and pity hidden deep under all her complaints Hmm, let's take a look. Maybe there's something around here. Nah, nothing really. Nah. Shocked by the rare occurrence of her talking to me, I raised my head. She pondered a little and breathed out wild white smoke. There was some warmth in her eyes. If you had any thoughts of the same thoughts, I would have to go to this situation. Branded with the word poverty, they never got much recognition from society. If people didn't criticize others based on just financial status, Perhaps they wouldn't have come to this. Is that some sort of compliment? She didn't answer my question directly as she nonchalantly turned her head towards the window. Got the money? No. She gave a straight answer without a change in her cold expression. She put the phone back in her pocket and looked at the scenery outside of the window. And she spoke calmly. Made up your mind? Hearing the implication within these words, I try to confirm with her. She grunted in response, keeping her gaze focused somewhere far away. On what? Is that main call of the day? She flashed a naughty grin at me. To which I could only reply with a bitter smile. It wasn't that funny when you try to joke about this sort of thing. You're surrendering yourself? Or did you find somewhere to hide? I couldn't think of other options. It only shrugged nonchalantly. <laughs> That only makes me even more concerned. I didn't think she would end my life, yet her strange calmness made me nervous. If there was a backup plan, then she wouldn't have been panicking the days before. Why was there such a great change of attitude overnight? Like a tune without harmony, the dissonance slowly expanded in my heart. 
I never believed in overnight enlightenment. Hearing someone say how they realized the truth of the world and gain a new life after joining some cult is more unbelievable than the plot of a bad sci-fi film. If a value you held true for decades could be changed with a few words, then what was the point of living? Hey. Something just didn't feel right the more I thought about it, so I decided to figure out what she meant by making up her mind. Hmm? What do you want? Seeing it through my attempt, she laughed. Shitless. I'd rather have some time to prepare myself mentally. Saying a prayer or leaving my will. Not really. But might as well be before my imminent death. She changed her pose against the wall, yet her gaze hadn't left the phone while answering me. Her behavior only confused me even more, so I decided to change the subject. Where will you go after getting the money? Still staying in Taiwan? I thought she was prepared to go abroad and hide there till it was all over. She asked with one eyebrow raised. Kanemotinoyatsura Words were filled with self mockery and hatred. There was even a sense of self abuse when someone as proud as her was saying that. Considering all the developments till now, plus her words, I finally put all the puzzle pieces together. You are the scapegoat, aren't you? With that train of thought, many things start to make sense. Why did she get into this mess with her sister? Why did she know so much about me despite being such a lousy kidnapper? The creditor gave her the information about the kidnapping and told her it was a chance to pay off all the debt plus earn some extra cash to start a new life. To avoid responsibility, they didn't even provide any sort of assistance. This is why she had to enlist her sister's help. But the true culprit, there's nothing to lose. There'd be tons of cash waiting for them if it worked out, and no trouble anyway if it failed. They had no choice but to gamble on this opportunity. They forced you to. <laughs> As though knowing what I was about to say, she glared at me. I couldn't come up with a response to her words. She could have pushed it all on other people, yet she chose to bear it all herself. Her expression darkened upon mentioning her sister, pressing her lips as though holding something in. She didn't have some exceptional determination letting her carry all this weight. She was just pushing herself.
and then realized how similar we are. We hated to be seen as weak, and the idea of becoming the people we despised. We both hated this world except she chose to resist the crime, and I chose to escape. I never saw someone this eager to be arrested. You are messed up. She snorted carelessly. There was no sadness in her voice, as though she was just recalling yesterday. Arming herself like a hedgehog, she refused to give up despite the challenge. She made this far with the dream of a better tomorrow. If even that can be granted, what else was left for her? I couldn't help but feel sympathy. Hearing the text message notification, she glanced at it briefly. What? Paying me no mind at all, she just lowered her head. There was no usual abusive aura, and in its place was some abnormal calm. She closed her eyes and sighed, then started dialing. Who are you calling? Otoke. She cut right to the chase and kept going before getting a full response. She twirled her hair in this dispirited manner. This was totally different from her usual tone. She wasn't in a hurry, as though she didn't even care about the ransom anymore. Something changed. The sense of unease weighed heavily on my chest. I used to be able to somehow guess her thoughts, yet I still couldn't figure out this crucial decision that Shim had made. I could hear sounds from the other side of the phone, but she ignored all those and continued. There was clear hatred in her voice. She coldly delivered her final words. She hung up the phone and threw it at the table. She, cut, she took out the last cigarette from the box and let the smoke drift through the room. Sensing my hesitation, she asked me. I was thinking how to word this in a way that wouldn't trigger her. Seeing me not answering, she frowned and pushed me low. Well, I learned my lesson. That's what the humans are good at. So, did you give up or what? The heavy mood was disrupted by the conversation. I ignored the last bit of worry in my mind and found the courage to talk. Yeah, 
たとえあんたを殺しても彼は金をくれないだろう<laughs> There's a bitter smile on her face. I did hope for some moving miracle, but here was the reality. Without trust between the two parties, there would be no negotiation. Even if he paid the money, the kidnapper could still break the deal. There was no insurance for the family. It was the most logical and accurate course of action. Yeah, it made my heart ache like some big bug bite. So, am I free to go? She leaned over while raising her eyebrow. It's so close I could smell the tobacco. What's the point of keeping me if there's no money involved? For the record, I can't cook or clean well. Bad choice for a housekeeper. She raises the corner of her mouth as though enjoying toying with me. You are really falling for me, aren't you? She squatted while replying and started to tighten the rope to make sure I couldn't get out of it. Is this still necessary? The rope rubbing my wounds created a new wave of pain. I couldn't help but complain about it. Hey, when will you be back? What if I need to go to the toilet? Grab what? Ignoring my protest, she left. What was she thinking? Hearing her footsteps getting further away, I couldn't figure out the current state of events. I couldn't do anything but sigh heavily. I was by myself in the room and no one would hear me no matter how loud I yelled. My limbs were tied up so tight I couldn't even stand, let alone escape. I started listening to the rain out of boredom and waiting for the passage of time and silence. I suddenly realized how pessimistic I had become. I wasn't scared as much as I used to be, nor focused on escaping. Realizing this was coming to an end, I had given up even the desire to gamble. If I were you, I might have done the same thing. I remembered our conversation from last night. I said with full honesty after understanding her helplessness and anger. Even in the 21st century, we still live in a world not so different from the past where your upbringing was destined at birth. Despite all the claims of freedom of choice and competition, we are still born different. Look at all those rich folks having a headache over a business problem. Are they truly happier? Those who fail blame it on the environment, while those who succeed credit themselves. Using those vague words to numb yourself, you can choose to ignore the unfair world around us. Normal people would just gripe about it briefly. How much hatred could someone who had difficulty in having a normal life harbor? <sighs> I sighed in depression. The hot breath turned into white smoke and freezing air. Wrong. Perhaps we all know about it too well. But we only choose to tell ourselves these lies since we couldn't change it. 
just like now. I couldn't change anything even though I understood their pain. I heard footsteps near the stairway and then the sound of the door opening. I grew speechless when I saw her. What's that? Supermarket sale? There are two gigantic plastic bags of stuff in her hand. It's like she'd gone from being frugal to big spender in an instant. She took out my bag matter-of-factly and left it on the desk after roiling it a little. Yeah, we got ourselves a big spender here. <laughs> she tilted her head, apparently not used to seeing me disobedient. What else could I do? Crack my head against the wall? She dumped all the food on the desk, as though she just robbed the convenience store clean. The other bag was all alcohol. All sorts of beer cans lay on the desk. More than enough for two. She'd suddenly passed me a beer. Me? What now? A good mood? Sure thing. I grabbed the beer before she changed her mind. Confused as I was, I didn't plan to let go of what I could get. She opened the microwave spaghetti, which made the whole room smell like butter. A scent more enticing than anything I'd ever smelled. Is this the last supper? Still not knowing her plan, I asked half jokingly. She muttered her with head tilted, then gave a nonchalant smile. That was a bad joke right there. But I really couldn't care less when there was hot food right before me. I took the food but had difficulty removing the wrap. Um, can you loosen the rope? No need to worry about me escaping. I don't plan to leave here before finishing my, my food. Even if you open the door and put a red carpet up there. She did loosen up the rope after leaving the threat. I still couldn't use my hands really, but using the fork was no problem. I eagerly opened the box and dived into the food. The hot sauce spread within my mouth and warmed up both my stomach and heart. Finally having a proper meal after several days, I was almost moved to tears. God, I didn't know microwave food could be this tasty. So good. She responded absent-mindedly. Compared to me wolfing down the food, she barely ate anything and kept drinking the alcohol. It's easy to get drunk if you don't eat something. She clearly wanted to get herself drunk like that. Worrying what might happen next, I tried to remind her about it. Um. 
あんたの説教を聞きたいわけじゃなくてあんたと飲みたいんだ飲まないと山奥に捨てるぞはいはいマン I had no choice but to raise a can after hearing her threat. She was a surprisingly quiet drinker with one hand in her pocket and leaning against the wall like a silent statue. It wasn't really that enjoyable to drink beer in this cold weather. Luckily, my body started to warm up and I could focus better. I kept myself conscious by eating food and drinking only low alcohol beer. Hey. Nanda. What did you mean when you said it's too late yesterday? <laughs> She turned her head away and sighed impatiently. With her index finger sliding on the edge of the beer can. It's more strange to say, stay quiet when drinking together like it's some funeral. So? Showing no interest in the subject, she had another large gulp. How about you come up with a subject? Anything you want. I still couldn't figure out her decision. The sudden change of attitude and the vague situation made me uncomfortable. It made more sense to let her say whatever she wanted and ask her about it. At this thing, silent for a while, she quietly spoke. About starting a new life somewhere no one knows you? She threw the can to the ground once it was empty, making a clear clanking sound. She said quietly, there was no anger in her voice amidst the rain, only powerless acceptance. すじゅんまんどころじゃない。でないと私がここまで苦労するわけがないだろう。Her face was red and I could see the effect of alcohol in her eyes. The light in them seemed to reflect all my thoughts. How much do you even owe? She lit up a cigarette and tried to calculate. She gradually breathed out the smoke then shook her head. She picked up the can and waved it left and right. She seemed to be figuring out what words to use while listening to the sound inside the can. The weak light shined on her face. She looked extra miserable from days of stress and fatigue. All these thoughts, fear, hatred, and pity all mixed up in my mind. What does it have to do with me if the world isn't fair? I should be punished for causing this mess. Even once I understand that this whole thing was just her problem, I still have these thoughts every once in a while. Locking them up won't solve the problem. Without changes to social structure, there would always be new crimes. It's so what? We all just focused on the problems before us and wish these people would disappear. Rather than worrying about the faraway future, 
we care more about the present where we reside. The alcohol spread within my mouth. It was too bitter to swallow. I waited for her to complete her sentence. ここから10年、数十年。死ぬまでこういう生活が続いていくのが一番怖いんだ。毎日働いても借金が返済できない。一生他人の代わりに金を稼ぎ続けて。I couldn't retort. Where there's life, there's hope. Felt like some pointless mockery. She reached for a bottle of wine. I could feel the strong alcoholic scent from her in her warm breath. Want to be drunk? Want to forget everything? Want to let it all go? You can tell all these without even asking. おやじが逃げた後誰かが毎日借金の取り立てに来て瓶を投げられたり勉強をかけられたり考えられることは全部やられた私まで先に付き合わせてまだ十二歳の頃だぞ変わった趣味を持つ金持ちって多いんだよね。母は毎日そういう人たちに向き合わされていた上、子供二人の面倒を見なければならない。ストレ。Oops, sorry. She covered the tragedy casually, as it was someone else's experience. 母が自殺する前に何を言ったと思う？ 親父を恨まないでってさ。私たちは恵まれていないだけって。She started to laugh mockingly, then continued to mumble in a trance. Wasn't that far off from a movie pilot? There were tragedies around us, but never came to our attention until we were affected. どうしてこんなことになるのか。どこに問題があったか、どうして私はこういう目に遭うのかって長い間考えていた。やがて人は平等じゃないと思い知った。私たちは価値がない方に生まれただけだと。もし本当に神様なんてクソったれがいたら。そいつは絶対死んだ方が人のためになる。金持ちどもが何を持って私を馬鹿にできるんだ。何を持って頭を使うべきだと言うんだ。何を持って自分が成功しているような口を聞くんだ。She got more and more agitated, trying to let go of all the injustice in her heart. The wine ball smashed into countless pieces on the floor. Death, the kidnapping, separation from her sibling. All these things finally got to the girl. Her suppressed emotions all came out like a collapsed den. She panted heavily and couldn't calm down her upheaving chest. All I could do was look at her quietly without saying a word. She took a step back and then collapsed to the floor against the wall like a wrecking ball. Her hands hugging her legs were shaking. There was sobbing in her voice. It was the first time I saw her this fragile, like a carefully crafted glasswork. Everything I forgot. 
私のことを知らない場所へ引き出えそんなに難しいことなのかどうして他人が当たり前のように持つものが私は一生をかけても手に入らないんだ悔しいどうしてやるのって私が。She mumbled as though in a dream. Her voice gradually died down until it was now audible. She didn't ask for some outrageous lineage or a rich family. All she ever wanted was a normal environment, but she couldn't get it. The world isn't fair. Some were born in third world countries and never had a chance to receive an education. Some were born handicapped and couldn't operate like others. No one can change that or deny the fact. There is no difference. One could feel bad for the younger sister who knew nothing, but even she had no choice in the matter. Their father abandoned them, their mother committed suicide. Their debt separated them from education, and they had nowhere to ask for help. I shouldn't expect her to have the courage to challenge her sister, let alone take care of all this after going through a constantly threatened childhood. Age doesn't determine that one should take responsibility, but if one possesses the respective power and knowledge, They could scold her for making that mistake, but she never had a choice in the matter. Breathing out some white smoke, I quietly sighed. If you want to restart your life in a place where no one knows about you, that's impossible, even if you paid off the debt. We were born with too many stigmas. Gender, race, looks, family. They will not leave you just because you move somewhere else. So She replied nonchalantly. There's regret in her voice. How could these people help? How can this unfairness be changed? Not once upon her questions with no answer, I followed her example and took a big drink from a wine bottle. I decided to worry about that once I was out of here. Oh, I can't talk to her. What's this? Can you look at the... Ah, oh, there we go. Even without the packaging, I can still tell the medicine on the table are sleeping pills. There were quite a few in the house. My mother needed them to fall asleep every night. I actually almost forgot about that. But why does she have them? Why did you buy so many sleeping pills? What? Are you worried about me to drink you? Her response rendered me speechless. She can help but start giggling. Be careful. You can kill me as much as you can. You can't choose a bad way to kill me. There was a smile on her face, but she mysteriously averted her gaze. But she mysteriously averted her gaze. It is a rectangular wooden desk. The rough, unprocessed surface has sawdust all over it. Looks like it's well worn with time. I would want to pick it up even if I found it at a recycling center. Okay. 
Okay, that didn't do much. Uh, hmm, let's see. In the bathroom. Nah, nah, not really. Oh, there's one toothbrush. Nah, nothing. Nothing there. Okay. Mm. We'll talk about that again. No. <laughs> Time. Hmm. Hmm. It's window. Oh, there. You can see the sky from the window. I should be able to collect more information if I can get closer. It's not locked. However, since this place doesn't appear to be on the first or second floor, jumping out of the window is a no-go. This makes the door the only exit out of here. We got a new note. Jumping out of the window would be unlikely. Okay. With the passage of time, the two of us fell silent. The wine glasses were empty, and the topics of conversation were exhausted. All that was left was the epilogue. Anta no itta tori, owari ni shiyo. The girl put down the can and walked towards me with the kitchen knife. She didn't even seem to mind the glass shards on the floor. The edge of the knife pointed at me flashed with danger. A simple push and that would be the end of my life. She stopped suddenly. Hands were trembling, nor did she seem confused. She just observed me calmly. The rain echoed in the room, along with the shallow breathing of the two of us. Are you going to kill me? I stared right back into her gaze. In the darkness, her eyes shined like stars. In those eyes, I saw myself, exhausted but fearless. The expression relaxed and she lowered the hand that held the knife. There's a note of frustration in her voice. Fear wouldn't help much here, right? I couldn't even reply with a bitter smile. There's no way that I wouldn't be scared by having a knife pointed at me. My hands are still trembling. Yet I couldn't escape nor resist. My only hope was that she wouldn't do it. She cut through the rope around my legs. After finally receiving freedom after all these days, I found the sensation extremely unfamiliar. I eagerly tried to move my legs. There were bruises where the rope used to be, as though they weren't part of my own body. I stood up while supporting myself against the wall. Finally looking at her from eye level, I realized she wasn't actually that tall. She still pointed a knife at me. The dim lamplight lit her exhausted yet determined face. They are just unlucky. There was something off about our words, but I couldn't really tell why it was. The alcohol made my mind numb. 
ここから出て道に沿って10分ぐらい歩くと住宅が見えてくるはずだ The weakness on her face disappeared instantly and changed into a usual cold expression. What about you? I still couldn't believe she would have just let me go. Something else? She decided to say nothing more and just stared at me. Was she planning to run? Or would there be someone helping her? Neither option seemed likely. I still couldn't figure out what was wrong before she started to rush me. There were many pieces hidden in my mind, and I couldn't pinpoint the problem. It might be strange for me to say this, but I hope your dream will come true. She smiled lightly with a bizarre confidence. Whatever. Leaving those questions behind, I stepped forward. My joints felt stiff, like rusty metal, and every pull of my muscles led to a sore sensation. The small, dusty room and its moldy air. Would I remember this place or forever forget about it like a dream? I took a deep breath and pushed open the door and walked into the rain without turning back. The heavy rain almost instantly soaked my clothes. I couldn't help but tremble from the cold and could barely stand with my twitching thighs. One step at a time. I could barely tell what direction I was headed this late at night. Rain also fogged my vision. The thick bushes cut my skin. This walk felt like an eternity. Was I on the right track? Should I rest? There were all these doubts and questions in my mind, as though they were part of some scenery and dream. I. The same borderless world of darkness that would engulf everything. <sighs> I raised my face and let the rain fall on it. The icy sensation sobered me up a little. My muscles were still trembling and could feel my temperature dropping. I might not be able to go forward if I stopped there. No more running. I promised her that I would live on with my power and change what I hated. I took a deep breath, clenched my teeth, and took another step. Finally, I saw lights in the distance. As though waking from a dream, a wave of sensations flooded through me. All the frustration, unease, hunger, and pain were as uncomfortable as fire burning. But they were all real. I finally confirmed it. I had made it out. In that moment of relief, my body gave out and lost consciousness. They say rain is the tears that God shed for the heartbroken. They say that rain is a water cast by the divine to cleanse our sins. The girl rested her head near the window, while watching the never-ending rain. Countless memories ran through her mind. Those that she kept in mind, those that she refused to face, and those that she thought she had forgotten. 
It must be the medicine. She was losing her grasp on consciousness. Her head was heavy like she had a hangover. She recalled the kidnapping event, her father, and her mother who ended her life. She had hated him for abandoning them, and her for showing weakness in the face of pressure. She thought of Eileen, her sister who had never experienced real joy. She didn't know if her sister was doing well or if she was safe. Strangely enough, there wasn't that much emotion at that very moment. There was a little bit of regrets and sadness, but nothing else seemed to matter. Finally, the person she kidnapped. She wanted to torment those self-righteous people and make them taste the same fear and hunger. However, the more time they spent together, the less she understood. Was he just someone special, or was the distance between the two just not as far apart as she had thought? We aren't different. You are just unlucky. This was the first time Sun had told her that. She had been pushing herself and refused to show any weakness before others. Not until hearing that line did she realize how much she craved recognition. She wanted someone to tell her this wasn't her fault, and that we were all the same. Even with different upbringings and from this different social classes, could the two truly understand each other? It was getting difficult to think that someone else handled the complicated questions. The last cigarette was lit and the smell woke up her mind just a little, yet her hand could hold it no more. She left it on the desk and let the filmer scent permeate the room. The palace laid her head on the desk and saw the world turn blurry before her. The irresistible sleepiness took over her body. So tired. She deserved the rest of doing this much right. She couldn't even feel the cold now, and her body grew even larger. Slowly, consciousness all was also leaving her. Even though the sound of rain was leaving her, it was replaced by a white world. You want to restart your life in a place where no one knows about you? That's impossible, even if you paid off the debt. His words came to mind and she weakly smiled. It's possible. Let go of all the labels and find a place to restart your life. Her eyes were closed, along with her consciousness. The girl quietly fell into the never-ending slumber, embraced by the rainy night.
It had been a week since the day I escaped from that prison. When I woke up, I was met with a clean white ceiling and the unique disinfectant scent of a sick room. Apparently someone found me collapsed on the side of the road and sent me to the hospital before I died of hypothermia. Once I got a little better, I was bombarded by police questioning and journalist reviews. I declined them all with the excuse of my unstable mental state. Even for this statement, I only offered the bare minimum. I knew it was pointless, but I just didn't want to assist them with the investigation. It might be futile, but I didn't want to betray her trust. I wanted to give more thought to what to do first. However, it wasn't necessary to ask me anyway. It didn't take long before the case was closed. I wasn't shocked by the outcome since I already had a vague idea wit when I left there. However, I somehow felt something was lost. There's a bizarre sense of emptiness, as though someone had gouged out my heart. She wanted to start a new life. So that's what she meant. A new note. A way to free her from the labels and answer her prayer to live in a better world. I murmured to myself next to the window. I lit a cigarette and placed it on the desk. There was nostalgia about this scent that I used to hate. The sewer sky had lightened up and the breeze was now blowing. Is it the same sunny day where you are now? I closed my eyes and prayed for her. もっと苦しめてやってもいいんだよ、私。あんたたちみたいな奴ら大嫌い。私の何がわかるんだ。言ってみなさいよ。姉ちゃんはそんなことしないもん。あなたこそ姉ちゃんのことが全然わかってない。